After the death of Rafiq al-Hariri, his son Saad came to power, and we thought the good times were back. But then we realized Saad wasn't much of a politician. Meet Baria, a mother of two and in many ways a typical Tripoli resident, a trained nurse who can't find a job. She's one of the 55% of people in this neighborhood out of work. This area is extremely poor. If people here work, they eat. If there's no work, they don't. Nothing in Babel Tabene works quite as it should. Take electricity, for example. All Lebanese people endure three hours a day without power. But here, it's up to 18 hours. Look at all these cables. Everyone is just taking power for themselves. And in the rain, the electricity cables touch the water tank. Just think of what could happen. The state does nothing here. Just look at all the trash. Lebanon's civil war ended 29 years ago, but there are still sporadic clashes here with a rival Shiite neighborhood. A bullet hit this mirror five years ago, and Baria can't afford to have it fixed. Yeah. Look how little water there is. If I don't shower, there will be water in the tap. But if I do take a shower, there's none here. Lebanon is a resource-rich country. It should have plenty of water. But years of corruption and mismanagement have strained its public services to breaking point and pushed its people out into the streets. We hope the revolution works. It has to. Here, nobody helps us. No social institution, no government bodies. We're just left like this. We won't accept it. We are tired and fed up. Baria is not alone. Hundreds of thousands of people here in Lebanon's second city are increasingly frustrated with the lack of water, electricity and the declining standards of living. Tripoli is normally a bastion of support for Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri, but last night's anti-government protests were the biggest yet, and for the moment, they show no sign of abating. After Benjamin Netanyahu